Hello, my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to talk about how this sweet, innocent little Jersey girl, do you believe me? Almost got into a knockdown, drag out brawl as I was waiting to be processed into visit. Ugh. If you're interested, please keep watching. You know the saying, how many times are you gonna do the same thing before you learn? Huh. I just filmed this whole entire video, talked and talked and talked and talked for like 20 minutes, stopped it and realized my microphone was off. I can't tell you how many times I do that. When am I gonna learn? So here we go, take two. So let's get into this story, but really quick before we start, if you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families. I am also the author of a book called The Comeback Code, and I have been coaching prison wives and family members since 2012, and I've been told that people would not be able to get through this sentence if it wasn't for me and everything that I offer to them. Ugh! humbling to never miss when I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes we do live videos in between. Make sure you hit subscribe and ding that little notification bell so you are the first to be notified. Okay, enough of all that. Let's get into this story. Back when Adam was about 10 years into his prison sentence, he was awarded an opportunity to move from a high security level prison, a United States penitentiary. Penitentiary? Is that the word? Penitentiary. Well, you know when you say a word so many times, it sounds weird? Penitentiary. That's right, right? <laughs> I went to work today. I came home. I'm sorry. I went to work today. I went to the gym. I came home and filmed a video with Adam. I got ready really quick, showered in between, filmed that video, quickly just shoved food down my throat, made the first video that the microphone wasn't on, and here I am making this again because I watched two shows. That's it. I'm only into two shows right now. The first is This Is Us and the second is The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. And tonight, This Is Us, as when I'm filming this video, This Is Us is coming back for their January 2020 season and I'm trying to get it all in. Excuse the hot mess express. We're getting aboard. Okay, let's try again. So when Adam was 10 years into his sentence, he was awarded to move down to a minimum. He moved six hours away from me. Back then, I was still going every two weeks. Actually, I went from going every week to every two weeks. Even though it was six hours away, I was able to take off every Friday that I needed. I had a lot of vacation days saved up. I would drive out there. And I would always have so much fun on this drive. I would kind of make it a little vacation for myself, like a long, like a fun road trip, you know? Back then is when I started my YouTube channel. I pulled it down for a while, but like those videos are cringe-tastic. Let me tell you, Ugh, embarrassing. Some of them are still up there. Some of them were too cringy. I had to pull down, but a lot of them are still up there. So this one afternoon, I'm getting to the hotel. I always stayed at the Best Western and I started to become kind of friendly with the people that worked there. I think they kind of basically figured out what I was doing there, but they were always really respectful. Nobody asked me what I was doing. Nobody was too much, you know, like sometimes, I don't know, I'm from the New York City metro area. We don't really talk to people about that kind of stuff. In my opinion, it's kind of rude to ask too personal of questions. Although my friends from the South tell me they'll leave the grocery store or checkout line knowing everybody's life story. To me, we're just a little reserved up here. Some people say rude, whatevs. Anyway, these people were never rude. They never asked me. They kind of knew. There was one instance where I was asked. I tried to stay at a cheaper motel. It was probably 50 or $60 cheaper a night to stay there. I stayed there once and I never stayed there again. And as long as I live, I will never give this person my money ever again. Because when I checked in, I had to hand him my license and it was the owner. And he said, Jersey, that's a long drive. What are you doing here from Jersey? And I said, oh, I'm here to visit somebody. That's all I said. I didn't say where I was visiting them. I didn't say what I was doing there, nothing. And he goes, hope he's worth it. Excuse me? First of all, that's none of your business. Second of all, let's hope that I have my wits about me that I would drive 250 miles each way for somebody who's worth it. That is not your business. He was so rude to me. All I said to him was, 
Yeah, he is. And then he continued to be really, really rude to me. My thought is, is my money less green because I'm going to visit somebody in prison? You're still taking my money, so keep your mouth shut. But that is not what this story is about. But let's go back to the story. We were not staying there. That was that one and only time. We were staying at the Best Western where the people were very, very sweet to me. So I pulled in. It was probably five or six in the evening. It was summertime. And I pulled in. And when I walked in the front door, there was a man checking in. He was about probably late 50s, maybe early 60s. He had white hair. He was a little bit round. He was very, very, very nice. He had a great energy about him. He was talking to the lady behind the desk who kind of brought me into the conversation because again, she recognized me. And he was talking about how he wasn't from town, asking for recommendations of where to go to dinner, places to eat in the area, and what time breakfast was in the morning. And I always tried to take bets with myself who was there for visit, who wasn't. But that one, I just... I don't know. I didn't really pay that much of attention. He left. He was done. I checked in. I went about my night. I probably made some videos, unpacked, went to sleep. I used to go to sleep really early so I could get up at 4.45, 5 o'clock to make a couple of videos because I only made videos when I was at visit and on the road back then, which I did for the first nine months of my YouTube career. Oh, no. <laughs> when I was on YouTube, Again, cringe nation back there. But everybody who does YouTube knows that their first few videos are cringy. But I was so shy. And I would say, um, and like, and you know, every, you know, other word, you know, was you know. It was awful. So I probably did that. And I got in my car and I drove 15 minutes to get to the prison for 8 o'clock. I parked the car. I walked down the stairs. I walked in the front door. And to the left is a glass all windowed room where you go in and you wait to be processed. So I opened the glass door and the first person I see sitting on the couch was that man that I saw checking into the hotel room the night before. So I filled out my paperwork and I sat down next to him and we started talking, just struck up a little bit of a conversation and he said he was clergy. He was there to see somebody he really didn't know very well because what you could do is if you're involved in prison ministry, you can get the names of people who don't get a lot of visits. Let's say the inmates parents can't make it they're elderly they don't have money they don't want to go visit they can submit his name to the prison ministry or he can submit his name to the, to the prison ministry if he does stuff in the back with religion and stuff like that and he doesn't get any visits and he's lonely they can put their names in and then somebody will come out and see them and that's what this man was doing the visit across from us were a couple of people they weren't involved in a conversation with us they were very to themselves they were kind of rude it was three girls who were early to mid 20s and then a mom. It looked like one of their mothers was with them. I don't know if they were sisters, if they were friends, what it was, but they were keeping themselves. They were not very polite. And I was just talking to this man. So as time went on, probably about 15 minutes, the room starts getting kind of full. People started trickling in and somebody in there always winds up asking the room, is it anybody's first time here? Partly because they wanna help people more so because they want that line to move smoothly because they don't want to get stuck behind somebody that's slow, that's having problems processing. So it's kind of a selfish, nice thing. So somebody says to the room, is it anybody's first time here? And those three girls and the mom in the corner says it's our first time here. And I don't know what possessed me to get involved that day. Normally I just keep my mouth shut. You learn after a few visits, you don't need to be the saving grace for everybody don't get involved. And I was at the don't get involved point at that point. So I don't know what I was thinking, but I was trying to be nice, I guess. And I said, do you have wire in your bra? And one of the girls was like, yeah, like doesn't everybody wear wire in their bra? And I said to her, your bra won't get through the metal detector. She's like, well, I'll take it off. I said, you cannot take your bra off. They're going to tell you that you have to have your bra on and you have to pass through the metal detector and wire in your bra will not get through the metal detector. She's like, well, I'm not ruining my $80 Victoria's Secret bra. I said, well, you're not getting in. And so she was going at me. I went back at her. She like looked around the room and she's like, I'm not doing it. She said, well, I'm not ruining my $80 Victoria's Secret bra. And I said, every single person in here has made the mistake of wearing an expensive bra with wire in it and wound up either ruining their bra or not getting visit that day. You can figure it out. 
but they are your options. That's it. Don't give me an attitude. I've been here countless times before. I know the ropes. You could ask anybody in here. So she's like, well, I'm not doing it. Everybody does this their first time, I swear, thinking that they're going to be the ones that gets through with the wire, thinking they're going to be the ones that could talk the cop into letting them get through the metal detector, even though they're setting it off. Sweetheart, I've seen this hundreds of times. There's nothing special about the wire in your bra that's going to make it not set off the metal detector. And I'm sorry, there's nothing special about you that's going to make that cop let you in wearing metal. It just, anyway. So she starts looking around the room and people are like, she's right. And the mother kind of got involved at this point because other people are like, mm-hmm, yeah, you're not going to get in with your wires. I'm like, oh because she's coming at me. And of course, usually I'm the nicest person under the sun, but don't come at me when one, you're wrong, two, you're standing in the way of me getting in to see my husband. Uh-uh-uh-uh, no, 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 girl. Mm -mm. The mother says to her, listen, go get the metal out of your bra. We don't want any problems. Side note, it's not the easiest thing to get the wire out of your bra if you're not a prison wife. <laughs> Everybody who is one knows how to do it. It does take some elbow grease, but you can do it. What you do is usually if it's a nice cop at the front desk, by the way, cop and CO is the same thing. I use those terms interchangeably because they inside the guys call them cops in the feds. So the CO, the cop at the front desk, sometimes is nice enough to give you a pen. They don't give you scissors. One time I was trying to help somebody out. I asked them if they had scissors and the cops like, uh, this is a prison. We don't keep scissors here. It's the front of a prison and everybody's locked into the back of a different building, but okay. I guarantee they have scissors, but they're not trying to give them to us. I get it. So they said, but I can give you a pen. And so nice cops usually do. What you can do is on the end of either end of the wire, you can poke a hole in that fabric. It's not easy, but if you hold it taut and you just poke enough, you'll be able to poke a hole in the fabric, push the wire out. You could save it for later. Sometimes you could leave it in the bathroom. A lot of people just throw it away. At that point, what I do is I throw it away and it's my visit bra. I've had the same visit bra for years at this point. It's a pain in the butt. Every prison wife knows you need a bra without wires. And as somebody in their fourth decade of life, it is not the most flattering situation. What I did was I made a video a while back about my favorite wire-free bras, the ones that work the best for visit. I will post it in the cards up there, but I'm gonna give you a disclaimer. I was doing all of my videos and all of my editing on my phone at that point. There's ums in there, there's horrible lighting. So just take it for what it's worth. It's not the best quality video, but the content and the links are still really good that are in that video. I still swear by my Victoria's Secret wire-free bra, my favorite. I have probably, I don't know, a handful of them at this point, and I wear one of those every day now anyway. I don't wear wires in my bra unless it's once in a while I have an event to go to and I need them to look good in a dress. Otherwise, they still hold up pretty nicely. Okay, getting down the road. So, as I'm arguing with this girl, the clergy guy next to me just kind of quiets up. He won't talk to me for the rest of the time we're waiting to be processed. In his head, he's probably thinking, where am I? What have I got myself into? These girls are animals and this is ridiculous. No one's really intrigued in getting involved in a fight with prison wives. Like nobody on the outside, this isn't normal. <laughs> Finally, the cop calls first visitor and the first visitor can go up and get processed. These girls happen to be first. So they walk out past me, <laughs> wires popped out of their bra and then they walk up to the front. Maybe two minutes later, I see them walk back pissed off out the front door. I was like, ha! Something else was wrong. <laughs> the next visitor goes up. She had something with her paperwork. So she had to come back into the processing room and just fix her paper really quick and then go back up there. So somebody asked her, what happened to those people? Was it the bra? And she said, no, they were at the wrong facility. They were here to see the, an inmate at the camp. Oops, at the camp, you don't have to go through a metal detector. <laughs> So on a federal complex, there can be different levels of 
custody, different buildings. The levels in the federal system are, I'm laughing because I feel bad, are US Penitentiary, the high security max, well it's super max, high security, then there's FCI, which is medium security, and then there is a low, and then there's a camp, and camp is the least amount of security. There's no fence around the building even. It's all dorm style living. There aren't cells that you get locked into. In fact, the inmates from the camp sometimes walk themselves over to the medium where they can be orderlies. A lot of times we'll see them sweeping and mopping and cleaning the bathroom when we're down there. They go in the back sometimes when the guys are on lockdown, they'll come over from there so they can distribute the meals and do the food stuff. It's just a lot more lax and a lot less security. So wire-free bras will definitely get through. I know this because one time I was in the parking lot leaving the hotel to go to the visit and some random girl yells from across the parking lot, hey, are you going to the prison? And I was like, actually I am. She's like, I'm having a crisis, can I have a ride? And I said, sure. And I'll tell you guys that story in another video. As I tell these stories, it jars memories of other stories because I've been to hundreds, if not more, of visits at this point. Not thousands. I've definitely been to hundreds, though. I felt partly vindicated, like, ha, that's what you get for being nasty to me, starting a fight with me, ugh. And partly, I felt really bad. I did make her ruin her $80 Victoria's Secret bra that would have very easily gotten through that if they go through a metal detector, they can wear wire. I can't remember if there's no metal detector or if it's not set as high as the one in the medium, but oops. And the clergy guy was done with me. The whole moral of that story is that poor man was probably like, I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. This is awful. This is ridiculous. These girls need Jesus. <laughs> poor guy. There's my story. I hope I did it as much justice in the second version that I did in the first. The first one I had a lot of fun making, but I also had a lot of fun making this one too. And hopefully I will learn my lesson. I need to put a sticky note on my camera that says, turn on the microphone. I swear. I've done it at least a handful of times, at the very least. That's embarrassing. I shouldn't admit these things. But uh, yeah, I'm the hot mess express. Choo choo. Welcome aboard. You know me. I wouldn't be me. It wouldn't be fun if we didn't have these moments. It's like bonding, you know? You guys did ask me for more story times about me. And I thought visit story times would be fun because it's still prison related, but it's story times from me, which is kind of cool because it kind of is why we're all here. So if you like these kind of things, if you have questions, topic ideas, whatever you want to know, if this jarred more questions, if you think I'm a little bit kooky, just write it all in the comments below. Make sure you give it a like again before you go and subscribe if you're not already. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you and Lord knows I am too. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. Every prison wife knows you need a wire without the bra. A wire without the bra. <laughs>